This is a weird camera review. This is the Blackmagic Ursa Mini Pro 12K. It's a pretty weird camera, and in a lot of ways, I think you could say it's ahead of its time. I mean, you don't see a whole lot of 12K TVs out there, and most projects are still being finished in 4K or just regular Full HD. So why would Blackmagic make a camera that can shoot in 12K? Because they felt like it, that's why. And when I think about this camera, I really kind of think of it as a really epic device for capturing pretty high-end VFX plates. I mean, to me, that's why you'd use 12K, to take stuff like this and turn it into stuff like this. And not to mention, it's pretty magical when you can take a shot like this and realize you have a hundred different ways to frame it. Yeah, bird. Get it, bird. I mean, just look at all this detail. Look at all this sweet, sweet detail. So much detail. So I want to clarify, I was trying to do that, the Bill Murray thing from Ghostbusters. But uh, yeah, clearly I've got some practice to do. So welcome to Am I a Filmmaker? I don't know what this channel is either, but we're gonna find out together. So Blackmagic sent me one of their 12K cameras to review, and when I first heard about this camera, it was pretty unexpected. It's a pretty interesting release from them. So every frame that you take with this camera is like an 80 megapixel raw, 14 stops of dynamic range, just piece of data. Just data right there, all that data, every single frame. And I really wanted to see what you could get out of a 12K camera. What kind of weird stuff can I do with this thing? Data, 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 data. <laughs> so let's talk about plates. Plates are basically any sort of shot or acquired footage that you plan to use for compositing. Generally, you want them to be as sharp as possible, as big as possible, and as clean as possible. The goal with a VFX plate is to give yourself as many options as possible when you're working with them in post. So say you show the shot to your director and they're like, I hate this. I wanted it closer. Well, with a 12K plate, you can just be like, all right, geez, fine. Here, here you go. Same shot, closer, same quality. And in the case of that other shot from before, all of the camera movement was added in post. That made it really easy because no tracking was needed. Just bring in your foreground as a still in your 3D application of choice. Mine's Blender. Bring in your character, texture it up, render it out, and uh, yeah, just go into After Effects and just start painting with elements. Just bring in whatever looks cool to you and then add in some fake camera motion and uh, yeah, you never had to do any motion tracking at all. And let's talk about textures. When every frame you shoot is an 80 megapixel image, you get lots of stuff you can use in post, like here and here and here. And if you can manage to get a couple of different angles of your location, you can take that stuff into Blender or whatever CG software you like to use and quickly rough in some geometry and use those textures from those same two images and just put that texture onto that geometry. And this right here is pretty quick and dirty. If I spent some time adding in some extra details here and there and, you know, making it actually look good, you could use it for a lot of different things. And if you want to learn more about doing this kind of stuff, just head over to Ian Hubert's channel. He's got a lot of videos about this that are like a hundred times better. And that is linked in the description. And yeah, sure, you could just take stills while you're on set with a stills camera, but I just kind of wanted to see what would happen. I was just thinking of different ways that I could utilize all this texture. So I had the dumb idea to try and do a photo scan or some photogrammetry with this camera. I just did a scan of this little scene and I sent about one out of every 10 frames into Meshroom to see if I could put together a really highly detailed photo scan. And uh, you know, it, uh, it, it didn't really, didn't really work. But my computer almost exploded. But still with this 12K image, you could take any one of these pictures of this dumpster and just rebuild the geometry and project the textures right back onto it. And blam, you got a pretty nice looking model of a dumpster. And we all know you can never have too many dumpsters. And aside from all of that visual effects stuff, 
this is just a really solid camera. To make this camera, they built an entirely different sensor. It's kind of a one of a kind sensor. They developed Blackmagic RAW alongside the development of this camera. So everyone who's always freaking out about how great Blackmagic RAW is, they made Blackmagic RAW so that this camera would make sense and you could shoot in 12K. And I don't know about y'all, but when I edit 12K footage on this pretty normal computer, it kind of handles it pretty okay, and I'm always really surprised. And if you've used any of the Ursa Mini line, like the G2, or I was a 4.6K owner for a very long time, uh, those, they're great cameras. They're probably my favorite cinema camera on the market today, below <laughs> 40 grand. It's got the built-in neutral density filter. It's got that great operating system that Blackmagic puts on all their cameras. I mean, you can go 12K, 8K, 6K, 4K, different frame rate options. This thing goes up to 240 frames per second. So for this one camera, they developed a new sensor, a brand new codec, and a whole new generation of their color science. And it all works together really well. Some people talk about issues with Moray, Moray, Moray. I haven't really seen a lot of that yet, but I'm sure it would happen if I use the camera a lot more often. So in case you wanted to see some more standard camera review type footage, here you go. Yeah, to me, this is a really interesting camera. It's not gonna be for everyone, and the price tag is relatively high, but I mean, Blackmagic has a camera that is like a little over a grand that can shoot 4K raw. So, uh, you know, you gotta, you gotta give them some leeway here and there. This is a camera that shoots 12K resolution. It's meant for high-end productions, high-end VFX, and you could get a normal Ursa Mini Pro G2 for a lot less money if you don't need all that resolution and all that crazy stuff. To me, this camera feels like a passion project just almost in my opinion just to kind of say like yeah yeah we did it 12k yeah yeah deal with that what are you gonna do what are you gonna do so thank you for watching stay tuned to this channel i'm gonna i'm gonna keep it going we're gonna keep i got some ideas anyways i'm really bad at outros so to play us out here's some footage that i shot in my backyard with a probe lens and this camera <laughs> <laughs>